Hey guys, and welcome back to the fourth episode of Lattes with Laura, my Q&A series. I actually, this week, do have a coffee, which makes me very, very happy. We actually have new cups as well. These are proper flat white cups from Amazon. I love them. But yeah, I'm very excited about this coffee and I'm gonna be drinking it in this video. As always, if you don't have a hot drink, by your side right now, you need to pause this video, girl, and go and make one because that's just not on. You need a hot drink if you're gonna watch Latte de Flora. It is the law, just so you know. <laughs> so now that you have your hot drink ready, I hope you paused that, by the way, I made one, otherwise I'm watching you. This week's Latte de Flora is a little bit different. I just wanted to say a massive, massive, massive thank you so much for all the love and support on my miscarriage video that I posted last week. I hoped that you guys would kind of understand but I could never have imagined that I'd have so much love and so many of you guys as well have experienced it or been through something similar which makes me so sad but also I really hope that me opening up about this can help you as well and that is my number one aim from all this is just trying to help other people in a similar or the same situation as me and hopefully that's what we're gonna be doing. So today's Lattes with Laura, as I've mentioned over on my Instagram, is actually going to be a miscarriage edition because I feel like after that video, I'm a little bit more prepared to talk about it now. I'm less emotional and I feel like it'd be good to answer some of you guys' questions about miscarriage. These are all anonymous. I feel like it's really important to kind of ask some of the questions that people want to know. So let's just get straight into it and answer some of these miscarriage related questions. But first coffee. <laughs> Always, but first coffee. <laughs> okay, so straight in there, the first question is, did you feel you couldn't take time off work as self-employed? Did it add pressure to grief? Yes. The first time wasn't so bad because I was getting married and I didn't feel guilty for taking time off. And I actually took a month off work um, just to kind of get myself back to, I don't know, a normal state of mind, I guess. But obviously, I've had three more since that first one, taking, months off work every time just hasn't happened for me and I haven't been able to do that. I actually had a miscarriage one day and then the next day I had a casting in London for an advert and I still went and I still did that casting. I didn't get it <laughs> because my mind was not good and I didn't feel very comf confident and comfortable in myself so I didn't get the casting but I still went, I still did it. When you're self-employed, life does have to just go on. But I also feel like being employed, sat in an office or sat at work would be just as hard because obviously, I mean, you're stuck at work. At least I have got the comfort of my own home to work in. And if I need to work in my pajamas or from my bed, I can. So I'm very lucky on that aspect. What happened when you told your family, friends and YouTube, I'm so scared to tell mine. I mean, I'm very lucky to have such a supportive family, especially my mum and dad. They are just unreal. As parents, they are the top of the pile. So obviously the first thing I did was told them. I can literally talk to them about it no matter what and I'm so lucky to have that because I know a lot of people don't and when I told my friends I was actually kind of forced into telling my friends because like I said in my video I actually had my first miscarriage I think it was the day of or the day before my hen do so, but my friends have been great like they've known about every single miscarriage and they've always been really supportive and always said the right things which is really really important as well but I do feel like talking about it really helps even if you just have one person in your life that you're really close to just open up to them and maybe they've been through it as well because do you know what guys so many people have been through this and they just don't bring it up in conversation. And then on the other side, I had quite a few of these questions, like how to be there for a friend going through multiple miscarriages, and also what is a helpful and sympath sympathetic thing to say to someone going through it. So I actually think this is a really good question, and actually miscarriage and infertility and all things related to that are really hard for people to kind of I don't know, bring up in conversation with their friends. It's really hard to know what to say because it's quite a sensitive subject and I get that because I don't know if I know what to say necessarily to someone. But one thing that my friend did, she came over and she bought me like a little Tesco bag of like magazines and chocolates and sweets. And 
it was just that little act of kindness that she thought to go and get some little bits and bobs that I might like to read or just to have a little like, you know, little chocolate bar in the evening. The fact that she'd done that really, really just made me smile. And to this day, I still remember that feeling when she walked in with like a hug and a little bag of goodies that she'd know I'd love. That just literally was the kindest thing. Sometimes you don't need someone to say something. It's more how they act to you and what they do. And sometimes your friend might need space and you just have to give them space. I feel like you've just got to be the best friend that you can be. And that is just gauging what your friend might need and not taking it personally because there's a lot of hormones going on when you have a miscarriage your brain your heart your emotions they're just everywhere so i feel like you just need to really gauge what they're telling you it's a really hard time for being a friend <laughs> but i feel like if you know them well enough then you can usually gauge it and yeah sometimes your friend just might want to be on her own and you can't force anything you just have to let them do that and that's okay as well but yeah just being the best friend you can be in all ways possible, but the little bag of goodies definitely like just made my heart smile. Okay, so I know this video isn't a usual Lattes with Laura, but we've still got to include some beauty products in here because it's still got to be a Lattes with Laura, hasn't it? So what's on my lips? Today I'm actually wearing the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon in shade 10, Trust Your Gut. I really, really love these lip crayons. I can't remember if I've spoken about these before. I feel like I have. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm really, really sorry, but this is literally what I have on my lips today. I feel like these lip crayons are my favorite lip product that I own. They are literally what I gravitate towards if I don't know what lip color to wear. I have this one and then like more of an orangey color, but this color is really nice. It's kind of very neutral and it's a nude, but it's quite dark. So if you have got fairer skin, it does work really well. Be honest, whenever I put this on, I never wipe it off as if it's the wrong color. So really like these, they're long, they're long lasting, they're, kind of matte but not dry and it's most like a matte lip balm which I really like and they're super pigmented and also because it's like a pencil um, form it's really easy to kind of get the line of your lips it's almost like a pencil liner and a lipstick in one which I think is really really good so yeah love this Okay, so again, another question I got quite a lot of is what have the doctors told you? Send in love. So again, my my kind of um, journey, I guess that's what you call it, my journey has been tricky and I haven't actually been told much about why I've had my miscarriages, unfortunately. I've had a few different tests. Well, I've had quite a lot of tests. I've had a lot of blood tests and um, a lot of mine have come back clear. So a lot of doctors have told me that it could just be bad luck, which is possibly the most aggravating thing about it is that there's no real reason. I have actually now been referred to a bit more of a specialized hospital and hopefully they're doing more tests that maybe NHS haven't done. So I'm hopefully gonna get more investigations there. I've got a procedure coming up, like a little operation I've got to have done just to check like everything inside and stuff like that. But at the moment, from this day, I don't really have any answers and I don't really have any reasons why it's happened. So bad luck looks like it might be the cause, but until I've had every single test under the sun done, then I won't know for sure. But yeah, at the moment, that is where I'm at with it. So next question, did you get any additional support from your GP slash hospital after your first miscarriage? No. <laughs> I have had shocking, shocking healthcare the whole way through this journey for me. And I'm four, four miscarriages down the line. The first miscarriage, I I had really, really, really bad aftercare at my local hospital. They told me confusing things. They told me to go home, come back in a week, see where we were. And I was never ever asked if I was okay. Even when I was there, late at night after coming in for an emergency, crying in a state, I was never asked if I was okay. In fact, one doctor actually asked me if I had stairs in my house. I was just like, yes, and that was it. <laughs> so that was great. It's been really, really hard in terms of 
how I've been looked after because I haven't been looked after, sadly. I have visited a lot of hospitals, a lot of GPs, I've seen a lot of people, and it's only now, within the last couple of months, <laughs> and this is a three year journey, within the last couple of months that I actually feel like I have finally seen a doctor that maybe understands what I'm talking about. And that is scary to me. Like, that's really scary. I've gone private and private doctors to me haven't been any better. I just don't know where the care is. And I really hope this isn't the same for every one of you that's been through this. But for me, that was a big element of me talking about miscarriage. And it's something that maybe I'll go into at a different date because I feel like this video will not be long enough for it. But I get really angry when I'm treated badly when it comes to this. And it's almost like sometimes because it's something that I, myself and Chris want, that it's I'm not allowed to be sad and depressed about it and I'm not allowed to feel emotional about it and I'm not allowed to want to fix it. That is how I have been treated, I feel. Yeah. Anyway, next question. <laughs> so the next question. What has helped you to cope through the miscarriages? Send in lots of love. Thank you so much. Um, so coping wise, I actually feel like we are so lucky to have the internet because I have follow so many amazing people that talk about their miscarriages or talk about their fertility journeys. And to be honest, knowing that other people go through it does keep you going because you don't feel so alone. Hence why I've decided to talk about it too. I mean, some of the accounts that I really love that I feel like you guys may enjoy as well. One is Tim and Celeste. I'll leave her name on the screen and down below. I'll leave the actual links down there as well. She is such a kind person, so amazing. She lives in Australia and she's had such a tough journey, but she always replies to my DMs. And I watched her on YouTube for quite a long time before I messaged her, lovely girl and She's got so many videos about it that kind of explain things so well. Yeah, really, really love her. She's beautiful inside and out. There's Jenny Monologues on Instagram who I've newly followed and she's gone through miscarriage. She is actually pregnant now with her rainbows. But yeah, there's so many different Instagram accounts. Oh my God, I can't even think off the top of my head. I'll leave some link down below because they really helped me. I also found a lot of help through quotes, which sounds crazy, but actually I've got a miscarriage board over on my Pinterest that I always kept private, but yesterday I actually made it public. So again, I will leave the link to that down below because a lot of the quotes that I saved in there really resonated me with me at different points of going through miscarriage. So that really helped and some of them, I download them and put them on my phone and have them as screensavers and things like that. I feel like it just gives me a little bit of a positive uplifting vibe in a time of need. Okay, so it's time for beauty product of the week, just to break up this video. And today's beauty product of the week are these foundation sticks by Bare Minerals. I wore these quite a lot at the end of last year and then I forgot about them a little bit and I've been wearing them again. I absolutely love them. So I actually have two because I'm in between shades. So I have Opal 01 and Birch 1.5 and I mix these together. So these are the Complexion Rescue Hydrating Foundation Sticks. And I mean, they do get a little bit messy on the outside because the lid gets a little bit messy. That's maybe the only flaw that they have. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's just a stick foundation. And usually these stick foundations I find can be quite drying, can be quite hard to blend, and I just would not gravitate towards these. However, these landed through my post box and I gave them a go and they are so not drying. They are so hydrating, which I guess they are called yeah, hydrating foundation stick, so you would think so. I actually use a damp beauty blender to spread, to spread, to blend it, and it works really well. Love them. And also, they don't budge, which I think is really important because I've got some foundation, I look in the mirror and I'm like, my nose is just skin. Where's the foundation gone? But they stay put all day, so yeah, love them. Actually, that's what I've got on today. Uh, obviously. Um, so that's literally all I've got on today. I've got a bit of extra concealer under my eyes because I had some eye bags going on. But yeah, that's what I've got on my skin today. So in case you're wondering. <laughs> How did you know when you were ready to start trying again after your first miscarriage? I've always been ready to try again as soon as I feel like my body and my mind is ready. I feel like you know. You know in your body because obviously you have to go through a certain amount of stages. You have to wait for your cycle to come back and things like that. But I feel like your head is more important and 
I always knew when I felt better in my mind and I didn't feel so emotional about things and I could go to Tesco and just walk past the baby aisle and not feel like I wanted to literally, I don't know, <laughs> let the ground swallow me up. I felt like that was a good indicator that I was ready to try again. But I feel like only you can make that decision and you have to make sure you're ready because you have to be prepared because being pregnant is difficult anyway because you have a lot of hormones, but obviously you will be scared about it possibly happening again. Not saying it will, but you have to take into account that you have to be quite strong. So yeah, just... I always felt like when my head was ready is when I was ready. And then another question we have is, have you been or felt the need to seek any counselling or therapy post miscarriages? Yes. More so recently, I've really looked into it. I'm scared. I'm really scared of having counselling or therapy. Sometimes I feel like it would do me so much good to talk to someone neutral about things and see if they have any ways that I can cope with it better because sometimes I just don't cope with it very well and I find it quite difficult. And then days like today, I'll have a better day. I feel a little bit more, I can get through today, it's all right. So I'm really scared of having that. I don't know why. If any of you guys have had counseling or therapy though, please do let me know down below in the comments if you feel like it's worth having, if you feel like it's worked for you because I'd be really interested to know how you find it. So yeah, that would be great. So leave your comments down below if you have. Okay, so to finish off this video, I wanted to talk about my book of the month. And I thought with the subject of this video being miscarriage, it would be quite nice to pop in a book that I felt really helped me and would relate to so many different people. So I actually have this on my Kindle. So I've just saved the cover on my phone, but I'll pop the cover on the screen right now so you can see it. This book is by Jessica Hepburn and it's called The Pursuit of Motherhood. So Jessica actually went through IVF but also miscarriage. So I feel like it's quite a broad spectrum of what she covers. And it just is a really, really good book. She has a really good humor in it and she kind of explains what she went through, the ups and downs, the emotional aspect of it, how it affected her and her husband. And it was just one of those books that I picked up and I just couldn't put down. Yeah, I will leave it linked down below. And she also has a second book that I haven't read yet um, that I think has also got amazing reviews. So I'll leave it linked below if you fancy reading that. I have so many recommendations, but maybe that's something I can pop on a blog post. So guys, that is all the questions. And I now have a very empty coffee. I don't know where that went. I must have drunk it through this video. I don't remember drinking. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for everyone that asked a question as well and again thank you so much for all the love on my last video if you have no idea what i'm talking about i'll leave it linked at the end of this video or down below as well i'll also pop all those instagram accounts that i have found really helpful down below and also I will link my Pinterest board for miscarriage quotes as well. I do feel like it's important for me to keep this conversation going. It's not something I want to talk about and then just never mention it ever again. So there will be an element of that kind of chat on this channel. As you saw by the last video, I am still resuming to my fashion and beauty content as well. If there's any videos you'd like to see, stuff like that, then just let me know because I'm open to talking about it in any way I can that will help you guys. So yeah. Anyway, I keep talking and talking and talking, so I feel like I need to just go away. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you again very soon for another video. Have a lovely day, and I'm sending you a big warm hug if you need it. Thanks, guys. Bye.